Hey, this is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast, where Joel and I discuss cord cutting, money saving technology, and everyone's favorite thing in the world the internet. Yay! And being a citizen of a digital citizen, if you will. Um, today, we're going to be talking about VPNs because we should be using them, especially now. Because the world is scary. It's very scary, and everyone's watching. But if you don't know, a, a VPN is a virtual private network. Now, if you telework, which a lot of people do, you are probably familiar with a VPN because you need to use yeah. one to you know, get onto your work's network. I did it earlier today. So did I. Now, what some may not know is you can subscribe to a VPN service and have your own VPN. And you might be asking yourself, why would I want to do that? Um, and really, it's, 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 it's a number of things um, because, you know, typically your LAN or, you know, your home network is connected to the wide area network of you know your isp yep. so all communication that you have is going to go through the isp but if you have a vpn you kind of have a man in the middle or yep. a person in the middle if you just an extra just layer of security right because you're what you do is you are essentially a part of their network. You're going to get assigned their IP address and that is going to be on a secure encrypted connection. So instead of going to your ISP first, you're going to go to them first and then communication is going to come out from the VPN, not your ISP. So your ISP really doesn't even see you anymore at that no. point. They see the service you're using. They don't even see that. Like it is because you're you're it's using IP tunneling. It's a completely encrypted oh, connection. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So a again, that's voodoo, and I say that a lot these days. Right. Well, no, but right. So what you do is, I mean, it's it's just like like your ISP can't see within your home network. No. So if you're connected via through a VPN, same idea. It's the same idea. Now, that's the ideal state because there's a lot of work that goes into that happening, and if you don't you know, dot your I's and cross your T's, there's a chance that you can get sussed out. Mm. And I'm going to get into that this episode. And really what we're going to talk about a little bit later is what you really want to look for when it comes to picking one of these VPNs to use. Um, and, to you know, to get back to why you may want to use one, well, if you're, you know, unblocking website content, say, you know, I mean, I've talked about this before that if you want to watch baseball or MLB, you can't watch your home team because they block you based on your region. So, like, if I'm in Maryland, I can't watch the Orioles. Right. But if I'm in Texas, I can watch the Orioles. So, if my VPN's in Texas, guess who's watching Orioles games? Yeah. Me. Um, and that works pretty much, you know with any sport that blocks based off geolocation because you can ba you can change your location that's wherever that server's based exactly it's like wherever that network work is based that's where your computer is coming from that's yeah, where you could be in bucharest right and it would it's still... like you know like we talked about last week it's like mike o'reilly teleporting <laughs> all over all over the God, nation i hope Magic. somebody listened to that episode oh. <laughs> because that statement he made it was ridiculous uh well it just needs to stay in the ether yeah now, listen to the last episode if you know what we're talking about. Um, so another thing you you might be interested in is uh, securing your in-transit data online. You know. it's a good point. Right. Because, like, data at rest, you know, is secure typically if you're, you know, if you've, if you've encrypted and, you you know, you have a firewall up. But data in motion, not so much. Right. But if it's encrypted, which it would be over a VPN, then, you know, so is that it's secure. Is that encrypting the packet as it actually moves across? Is that how that works? I'll get into that a bit later yeah. on what that actually entails on how to encrypt it. Because this is more of a networking thing. It and is. Like a, 
it's never been my bag in IT, right? Like I, I, I like it. I find it interesting, but it's not. It's not ever been an area that I've had to. Yeah, you know, I mean, in. well, most data. I mean, if it's not encrypted, like I could grab Wireshark, which is a program. Oh, I know. It. And just and just look at the yeah. data as it comes across and decode yeah, it's a it. Packet sniffer. Yeah, exactly. I can just look at the packets as they come over. Yeah. You know, if you can get a hold of the packets, or you can get into. You know, if you can have access to that yeah. network, that path, I can look and that's see what's going on. That's only one of many packet sniffers. Exactly. But that's the most common one. Right. Because it's free. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so so that those are two reasons. I mean, for one, you know, peer-to-peer file sharing. Yeah. You probably want to hide yourself from that. And, I mean, this comes up a lot, especially lately, because I did the episode on... Um, you know, jailbreaking an Amazon Fire TV. Right. And really, it's not, you know, people ask me about jailbreaking Amazon Fire TV. I did a bit of like a newsy episode a few yeah, weeks back I on it. that. And it's really, there's no such thing. Yeah. People, usually when they say jailbreak, they're implying that you're altering the right. operating system or gaining some kind of special access. Yeah. You're not. They're just installing Kodi on it. And... You know, go ahead and listen back at the uh, Cody episode um, to get a better sense of that. To get a better sense of what Cody will do for you, it's really just a media center, and people use it because there's a whole bunch of add-ons out there. It's a good tool. Yeah, it really is. It'll let you. It'll basically it's a media center that'll allow you to access any video on demand service out there on the net. So if somebody built a Kodi plugin to attach to some torrent site or some peer-to-peer network, you can actually watch that stuff on your yep. Kodi. I don't condone that because eh, a lot of that stuff is unlicensed, but that's what people do. Well, and as we got into in the episode, just to, you know, full disclosure, Kodi's working on trying to clean that up. Right, because it's not Kodi. No, it's, it's the people building the apps for Kodi. Exactly. Um, and... What really kind of here's the thing that makes me nervous. It's like I don't can do, I don't watch any unlicensed content. I make sure I pay for everything that I watch, or I watch ads because that's another op- like usually you're yeah. either gonna you're either gonna be you're paying for it, paying or, directly out of your pocketbook or with your eyeballs. Exactly. So, but what I do say is because a lot of people will get kind of tricked into. I mean, I know it's kind of like. When people tell me that, oh, I got this device and it lets me watch whatever I want, it's I'm dubious because it's like, do you are you really that kind of ignorant to like are you ignoring it purposefully? Like you're purposely ignoring the fact that right. you're not or do you really not know? And I'm gonna say if you're either one of those, you should be using a VPN because if your ISP starts cracking down on any of this, they're coming after you. Right. So so I look at it as, and maybe I'm oversimplifying, but reasons for having a, a VPN service that you take advantage of fall into two main categories. One is everything you're talking about, which is you're doing something relatively sophisticated that might be a little iffy for whatever reasons, and you just don't want everyone knowing you're doing it for whatever reason. Right. Right? And there's legitimate reasons And for that. there's plenty of legitimate reasons for that, right? Um, and there's some there's plenty of non-legitimate reasons too, but uh but either way, that's one category. The other category to me is just general security. Right? Mm-hmm. Like cuz if you're using a VPN, it means that effectively you've built a moat around your well secured home right? right like that's the analogy i think of it yeah and and to be clear though they're not foolproof no no but it is enhanced security that's yes, my it only definitely point. is and i mean we were talking about this earlier you brought up the an- analogy of you know thieves who break into cars mm. you know they walk down the street and they try each door yeah, I mean, like, so the the classic example, right? I've I I had a couple of these. It's basically like, you know, most crime, most petty crime, is um, crime of opportunity, right? Like, so yep. you're 
you got a bunch of cars on a street, right? In a certainly in a city, and you know a thief will walk down and pull the door handle on every car until one is unlocked. Right, right. Like so, you because odds are someone on the street forgot. Yeah, someone. Right, you got forty cars there. You try them all. Two, three, four of them are unlocked, and you watch Gone in sixty seconds. You know, wow, I'm dating myself, but like you watch those kinds of movies. Yeah. And you think, oh, wow. Fast and the Furious 17. Yeah, or whatever, (laughs) right? And everyone's like a super sophisticated thief. Well, it doesn't take much to pull the door handle, right? right? Which is what most people are doing. Typically, yep. And like the other one I like to use is like, uh, I think I told you, my my dad uh, was asking about getting a security system for his house. Oh, right, right. And whether he should get one or whatever. And I said, look, you know, and and I have one, like full dis... Closure. I like I have one and I think it's great and all that, but like uh you know, do you need one? And like, you know, is it worth the money? Is basically what right. I was getting asked. And I said, Look, if you're really worried about the money, you're probably better to go get an ADT sticker and just slap it on slap your front it, door. Right. And that'll scare away seventy five percent of any right. thief that would come by your house. Cause they're just going to go to the guy's house next door. Yeah, that guy doesn't have a sticker. Have a sticker so. Right? And and so, like, a VPN, one of the beautiful things about it is the the moment they bump into it, right? Like, someone who's trying to be invasive, uh, they just turn around and go to the next person. Yeah. I mean, and that gets down to, because we did talk about, because technically, watching pirated video isn't explicitly illegal right but it's not legal either no and it's in this gray area where the law they really has it hasn't been in the u.s anyway it hasn't it, been decided it has not yet been decided and i guarantee you the way this country works is the minute one of those isps decides to do a class action and haul a bunch of people into court yeah. the judge is probably going to side with the company well i mean honestly they would be right to, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, but yeah. like you know, uh, because there's a property rights thing going on there. The the thing I would say though is that uh, while all of the uh, a watching of that content is going on in the interim, uh, the point we called out in I don't know however many yeah, it was a while ago the Cody episode was that like you know just protect yourself like it not saying it's it's illegal it's not right but it, it's one of those things that it's a legal gray area yeah and, and you don't want to the the thing is is like it'll eventually become law and you don't want to be the example right you don't want to be the case and that's what i that mean by it. like they they'd be right to is that the law is on the side of those companies yeah i mean i i tend to agree with you i mean i personally don't do it just because You know, my wife a while ago kind of worked in the business and it's not, you know, people think that when they're watching pirated content, it's, you know, millionaires and movie stars that are robbing. And that's really not the case. It's the person who, you know, is the driver for like the casting crew. It's the person who puts up the set. It's the grip, whatever that is. I got a, Um, (laughs) I got a buddy who his wife, uh, works on the costume design for the show Vikings. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. And uh, it's a yeah. great show, and they do amazing work. It's a blue-collar living. Yeah, you know I mean? mean it's, it's, it's a work. It's job. And so I don't I don't mean to, and then I hope I don't offend anyone, I, I don't mean to be like, oh, it's bad to do no, that. No, I'm not saying it's, that at all. I'm just saying it's, it's my personal like, ethical choice yeah, to I not just don't think do it. it. And, and honestly, more than anything, with our listeners, I, I really just don't want anyone to get in trouble with the law. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying this. Because, I mean, what I'm saying here is I personally don't do it. If you do it, that's fine. Yeah. Make sure you protect yourself with a VPN. If you do it, I'm not the cops, right? Do whatever right. you got to do. Exactly. But, like, I, I do worry about people because... Sometimes they get these, you know, jailbroken Cody devices. Well, that's the and thing. And they think, oh, because they this paid is legal, somebody. Because right? that does happen. Like, it's like you go to these nef- like nefarious. Yeah, hmm, and they seem and legit. They do. Right? They see these websites where they're selling you some white label streaming device. Yeah. That's an, really just an Android box. 
that they've put an installation of Cody on and then put these ad ons on a couple on apps it on that allows you to that. watch some, you know, unlicensed content. Some torrented stuff. Since you somewhere. paid this person to do it, you you might feel like it's natural if you paid money for something to feel yeah. Oh, okay, I paid money for this. It's fine. I, I'm sure this is on but the, the up way and up. the courts are probably going to look at they're that. They're going to say no. The money didn't go into the right pockets, right. and that's the problem. Exactly. And that's why I say like it's just it's better to steer clear of that. But if you're going to do anything like that, right? Which is whatever, right? right. Like everybody yeah, do what you got to do. Fire stick. If you're going to do what you're going to do, like put a VPN around it. Exactly. So nobody is is observing yeah you so they doing can't it. easily see you yeah so you know and and that really that's one of the big benefits of a vpn is that kind of you know hiding it, it, it people say anonymous i don't like to say that no. because there's a way to find you yeah um, it's just harder and i'll get into it and and what i'll do this in this episode actually is is kind of talk about the things to look at that will make it harder to find like, like you, there's a certain there's certain qualities of a vpn that you want to look at that will kind of keep you more hidden than others right and and we'll get into all that um but other benefits uh cloaking vpn calls if you i mean i'm sorry voip calls yep thank you uh voice over ip i don't know if you know most cord cutters have to use if they want to have a landline type yeah. phone they're using voice over ip like I said earlier, you can sniff a packet. If it, you might as Listen well be every... screaming out your door, honestly, because yeah. you, you can just grab it and then decode the whole call. Um, if you use a VPN, you can't because it's encrypted. Right. So it's that's one thing right there is it keeps your calls kind of obscured. Oh, and the the beautiful thing about like if you're not using a VPN and someone's grabbing uh, grabbing the packet. Like, not only do they have the audio file of it, uh, because it's digital, right. it's really easy to put it into a transcript. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, so, there you go. I mean, like, uh, w- which is not so great. Right. Um, and some other benefits, your search history isn't logged. So, yeah. you know, if, you, if you're a big fan, we, we talked about this before, like, I personally feel that your information is yours, your yeah. property. Uh, a lot of companies don't. A lot of companies feel as though if you're out there doing something, they and that grab it and make it their bonkers, Oh, me too. Because they I, monetize it. They'll sell it well, and make money off of I'm it. And I'm fine with... Uh, like, I, but I, I would like say, to monetize my own data. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm fine with monetizing it. Just give me the money for right. monetizing <laughs> Exactly. Like, get me a cut of it. So, you know, you can do that. You can, you know, block, you know like hide your search history. Um, maybe you just don't want to be tracked, period. And VPN's great for Nothing that. Nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. So that's really the big benefits there. Did I mention public Wi-Fi? You did not. Oh, that's another good one. Like if you're um, at a Starbucks or, you know, insert other yeah. coffee place not endorsing us. Um, the- <laughs> Seattle's best. Yeah. Right. Hey, it took me a minute. Know. Yeah. It took me a minute. <laughs> um, and, you, you know, they all get free Wi-Fi for the most part. Yeah. You're pretty much, if you're on that, you're just open. Yeah, everybody can see what Anyone you're can, Yeah, but a VPN, you're you're completely walled off. Yep. Because you're actually on that virtual private Which network. anyone who, who has, like, some sort of work-from-home policy with their company who has parked themselves in a Starbucks or a... Wherever, right. Panera Bread or whatever. Because well, I've done all of well, those. Well, you're probably using their VPN. That's what I was about to say. Right. You're using the company's VPN. So it's plenty secure when you're sitting there, right? Or it's as secure as the company's VPN. But, like, that's why it's it's fairly, uh, you know, decent to, like, sit in those places. And you don't have any real, like, security problems that are glaring. Yep, exactly. So we've gone over, you know, all the reasons why you should, you know, grab a VPN. So let's actually get into the things that are important when choosing one. Because I'll let you, you know, I'll let you in on something here. Um, You know, those review sites where you have to go for anything, you know? Yeah, of course. When you go into those review sites, you can't really trust them because 
in the world of internet advertising, um, there's something called affiliate marketing. Yeah. And v- in VPNs especially, it's really bad where a company will basically pay a website owner to rank it higher. Or yeah, you know, well basically it's 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 if somebody and okay, the full disclosure, on my blog, um there are I I do this. I use affiliate marketing on my sure, blog. Of course. Um but it's only for products that I use. Right. For instance, I use a VPN. I use IP Vanish. They actually, if somebody goes through IP Vanish through my site, I get a small percentage if they buy from IP Vanish. But I actually use IP Vanish. Yeah. And I try to do that on my site. If I'm going to try to, you know, get any type of monetary compensation for something, it's going to be for a product that I actually use and support. Um, you know, b- but when you're out there and you're looking for VPNs, you go to a review site, a lot of them are just, yeah, if you, you can tell they're all affiliate links. So be very wary when you're out there looking at just, especially sites that are all about just doing reviews because it, usually there's a lot of affiliate marketing and it links there. I just wanted to mention that because yeah. in the VPN space, it's really rampant. rampant. Like one one of the things that I do generally when I'm just looking up anything um, and trying to get a ranking, a ranked order of whatever, is I look at you know three or four of the ranked orders mm-hmm. yeah. and see who are because the likelihood of all of them ranking the same people because they've worked out the same deal uh well, for usually affiliate it's, it's marketing. the one that pays the most is number one <laughs> well yeah <laughs> but you know and and that's the thing is like i i mean for instance i mean a good example is i um like sling i've a i've done affiliate i've affiliate marketed for sling here's the thing though you've heard me say many times in the podcast when you cut the cord what's the best way to do it just buy a la carte episodes of shows. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's a lot better than using any other service. It's just yeah. to go to like an Amazon or an iTunes and just buy the episodes because you're watching. If you're getting a sling or something like that, as great as the service is. It's a good service. It's You're basically getting a package that is just it's dramatically cable over- discounted it, it it is it's cable over the internet and i'll be honest I've, okay, I, I i have sling i use it like every once in a while to watch something live that like like for instance um the last thing we watched was the ted cruz bernie sanders debate sure you know because it was live and it's available i could just throw it up on the tv real quick and that's what it's for it's for live television but uh, anybody who comes to me and they want to ask if they're going to cut the cord i say get an antenna and just buy a la carte Yep. And then if if you're if if that doesn't satisfy you, then look at things like DirecTV, Sling, Vu, and all that. But I mean, and that's how I try to run my blog. A lot of these VPN review websites, they're just trying to get paid. So just be careful. And I'm just saying that to warn you, you know. It's noteworthy. And really, the whole point of this podcast is I'll tell you exactly what you need to look for when you go to a VPN to where you don't even need to look at a review site. Just keep these things in mind. Um, The first thing that's important, probably the most important part of a VPN is the encryption. So let me give you a quick primer on what I mean by that. Now, I mean, encryption goes back a long way. I mean, before computers. I mean, when you're talking about, it was, uh, if you want to pass a message to somebody, you know, you have like a uh, a book cipher. And yep. you say, you know, page. Such and such. Such and, and such. In lay this, down a piece of paper this, that has holes cut in. Right, in this book. Or, you know, or you not even, yeah, that's one way of doing it. But an, an even easier way is, you know, you write a bunch of numbers on a piece of paper. And then you know that, you know, page 42 of this book will tell you that's it's the number position of each letter on that Maybe page. Maybe I've watched Oz too many times. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So so and that's what it is. It's a cipher key type. Of course. Thing. So 
So it, computer encryption is essentially it's more sophisticated. It's mu- it's just more sophisticated. But so when it comes to computer encryption, there's two you know major categories: symmetrical and asymmetrical. Symmetrical means that each party passing the message share the same key. Yep. So I use the key to make the message, and then the person on the other end uses that key to decode the message. Right. Very. Is- it's very fast. And that's why it is preferable. The problem is getting the key to the other end. Once you share the same key, it's fine. But you don't have the key until I give it to you, right? Got it. So the other type of encryption is kind of the key to this, no pun intended, (laughs) Um, is asymmetric. And that's basically like I have a public key and a private key. My public key, anyone can look at. And my private key is what I use to decode the message that someone sends me using my public key. So Joel has my public key. Joel takes a message and uses my public key to encrypt it. My private key is the only thing in the world that can decode that message. And and that's how it works for everyone. Like right. the public key is out there. Only my private key can decode it. Um, so Joel has a public key, private key. I have his public key. I use it. I send it to him, and he can decode it. No one else can decode his public key. Um, and that's essentially asymmetric. That's how you get the key to somebody. Right. So it's a that makes sense. So modern encryption uses a com- usually uses a combination of those two things. So to get the key, you use the asymmetric. Once they have the key, it's symmetric. And the reason is speed, because the, you know, sure. asymmetric is slow. Fast. Symmetric is fast. Oh, symmetric okay, is the I got one. It. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, and, and like I said earlier, listeners, if you haven't picked up on this, this is not my area of expertise. Well, it's not so many I, people's. Well, and, and, and I defer and, to you. On uh, well, this. the reason why I, I want to explain it is because you need to know what type of of encryption you want to look for. Yeah, I I look at it as basically VPN good, Joel likey. Uh, beyond that, I I go, hey Dennis, can you help me set this up? <laughs> so so when it comes to the and, and the reason is is there's standards and there's bunk standards out there. There's stuff that's been cracked that sure. people still use, or there's stuff that's easily cracked. You know, it's it's what. So when it comes down to what encryption you want to look for is The, oh, one thing real quick, the asymmetric, you know, the public key, private key, that's called a handshake. Because basically we're going to handshake, which is us doing the private key, public key thing. Exactly. And then I, then we, we pass an, the symmetric key. Sure. That way it's quicker. So for handshake encryption, you want to look for RSA 2048. Or RSA forty ninety six or DH twenty forty eight. Those are the standards. What do they mean? Doesn't matter. Just look for those. If they have handshake encryption for those three, that's solid handshake encryption. Uh, that's like NIST level, you know, right. encryption. Uh, National, National Institute, Institute of Standards, standards and, and Technology. Technology. Um, now, and that number is the bits. That's the bit stream behind it. Got it. Okay. Very long. On you know the handshake encryption, as far as symmetric goes, like once you've made the handshake, you're going to look for AES one twenty eight or AES two fifty six. Got it. Those two are solid. Anything else? Be wary of. I wouldn't use that VPN, honestly. Okay. So, so that's what you're looking for. That's going to ensure that you have solid encryption on that VPN. The second thing you want to look for uh, is logging. When you have a server, you log information, you know, for troubleshooting, you know, whatever. Um, You want to choose a VPN, though, that doesn't keep logs on the activity of their users. And um, so so really what you want to make sure you want to look for is that they don't keep a log of the DNS requests. So, you know, your your, your domain domain name name service. And basically, that's um, like when you go in and you type Google.com, 
Yeah. There's an IP address associated with Google.com. DNS servers all over the world know what that relationship is. Yeah, it's just a translation to the site. You want to make sure that your VPN... But they actually disclose what oh, they, login yes. they do? Well, they, yes, they will. VPN yeah. will tell you in their terms of service actually what they should. And if they don't, then I wouldn't trust it. Buyer beware. Right. Got it. Um, so they they sh- first they should have a it's called a first tier DNS which means they own the DNS server so they're not using some other DNS server somewhere else because then they don't have control over it so if they have control over the DNS server then it's guaranteed that only they see what comes in right. and out of that they're network. not using some other third party right so um, make sure they're not logging DNS requests. Make sure that they don't log a timestamp of any activity because that can get back to you too because they can correlate. Like, yeah. a, I mean, if you're really in, if you're really into privacy, um, somebody can correlate. You know, you know, you logged into some site. They know that that account name you posted on a forum or something. They know that account name is associated with that forum. They get a hold of the log at the VPN. Yeah. They can tie the two together. It only takes so many times of that before they figure, figure out, out who you are. You. And and you might say, oh, that's crazy. No, that's exactly what the government or you know NSA and things and like that. That's what they do well, to, to figure out who people exactly are. what anyone who was trying to figure that out right. would do. Exactly. Um, and they don't log the IP address. For obvious reasons. Right. You know, and, and I'm not saying, like, because when you go in with a VPN, you get an address from the VPN. The lo- What I'm talking about here is the logging your real IP address that you're coming in through. Yeah. Make sure they're not doing that. Um, so, and then they should state that in the terms of service, what logs they keep and and they don't, and then do not keep. Um, and they'll, they should also tell you if they have a first tier DNS or not in their terms of service. So. Makes sense. Yeah. And if you guys haven't picked up on it, refer back to the antenna episode we had where we talked through TV Fool. Is that? Yeah. 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 TV Fool. My role in this episode is to be the absolute dunsky in the room. (laughs) Right, so any any confusion that you hear in Dennis's voice is because he's seen a question mark hanging over my yeah. head. And basically, if you have a question and it's not answered by me, it's really Joel's fault. Yeah, because he should have asked that question. Totally agree. <laughs> what? What are we talking about? Yeah. So so I you know my like whenever I hear something that that sounds too confusing, I'm gonna try and poke a question in there. But so far, I'm following you. Right. And it's really just because we're in my realm here. If we're talking about finance, roll switch. What? You're the, you're the master of that domain. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> so, okay. Um, the next thing is, do they have an anonymous payment method? Yeah. I mean, that, makes, that makes plenty of sense to me. Because if they know who you are... And whoever's looking to see who you are gets a hold of them, they're going to get a hold of you. When you say payment method, you mean payment to the VPN? To the itself. VPN. To, yes. Yeah. I mean, that seems obvious, but I, I do want to say that that what that spells out to me, like, if they can figure out it, they. So Dennis and I are going to be using they, they. in air quotes. Right. They is a, a, it's a it, it's whoever whoever is interested exactly hey, 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 right like so it might be the government various, it might be your i your ISP it could be Martians I don't it could know. yes it might but, be Mike O'Reilly trying to figure out if anyone's discovered how to teleport in a pl- it, like planet to planet. That's the second time we've referenced that. Because it, it cracked me up that he. I hope he, someone listened to the last episode. Oh, I, oh yeah, because you're lost if you. Yeah. yeah if, but, if you haven't. Anyways, go ahead. So okay, so and what I mean by that with the anonymous payment is you know gift card, Bitcoin, you know any of those methods. Doga will coin, work just fine. whatever. Yeah. Uh, cash, if you want to snail mail your payment in. Wow. Whatever. But, but any cryptocurrency or gift card will work just fine because it, it's basically your your standard, like, I forget what the terms are, 
but Bitcoin it's should be accepted. If 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 yeah, for most, most VPNs, are, right? most like, VPNs will accept Bitcoin if yeah. they're legitimate. Um, but really, I mean, it comes down to they shouldn't ask you for any information at all about who you are, except from an email, for because you need some yeah. way to log in. And that email, you know, there are ways to get you know private, secure emails that are not connected to you. Um, and as a matter of fact, to be completely you know, honest with you, your VPN email, I would only use it for your VPN. I would sure. go out and grab an email and just use it for them. That way you're completely detached from it and it's not associated with any other accounts. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, I know it sounds kind of tinfoil hat-ish, but we're talking about privacy. And well, and, and again, you know, if this isn't your thing, right? Like there's... Oh, they turn, they probably tuned out when I started talking about encryption. Well, no, I, I still think there's... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, maybe they fast forwarded that part, but <laughs> there, there's plenty of reasons for like your average citizen to be interested in like, you know, a VPN. Yes. There are people that are very, very opinionated about the need for a VPN. Right. And a lot of these comments about like, oh, get a separate email account and so on are geared more towards those folks. Exactly. You're, thank you for clarifying that. No, you're I, you're totally right. It and, doesn't and, mean you shouldn't do it if you're an average citizen. It's just how much time do you want to invest? And, and you know, it's, somebody said this. It's like your security model. It's like, what do you care about, really? Right. Um, and if you just want to go to Starbucks and get on the public Wi-Fi and not worry about anyone just happening upon your information, just... Get an EP, uh, the get the VPN with the encryption I mentioned, and that's it. Yeah, and you probably don't need to worry about getting a separate email that's or any of that stuff. No, or, who cares at that but, point? You because know, if you're not interested, if you're not really like, if you're not worried about, if you're not doing anything questionable that you would, or just not a big strong advocate for privacy, right? For privacy, because there are people who just like don't. Like they feel that like privacy is a right. Just private people, right? Nothing wrong and, with and that. And there's no and there's nothing wrong with that at all. And that's that's really who this is for when it comes to go and getting that private email. Yeah, because then you've completely detached yourself from your online traffic. Yeah, and I I think it's just useful for anyone who still is listening. Hopefully, a few, um, you know. Is oh, that, this is an in the weeds episode. Yeah, well, right here. but I but I think it doesn't have to be that in the weeds, right? Like, <laughs> crib from it what you think you might want as the average citizen, if you are that, and if you're someone who's really a big privacy advocate, well, then listen intently, right? And then you know, there's nothing wrong hey, with that. If we you... had an AI, so we did an artificial intelligence episode. I don't know, a while back. I had a lot of fun with that one. Well, I, yeah, me too. I, I mean, like, I, I did all the research for it. I had a blast. But um, it, it, weirdest thing, I think I remember you telling me, like, a bunch of people from uh, Germany downloaded it. And yes, I have no like idea. That. It was on one day, too. It, yeah. was like, it was like 35, just, yeah. 40 German yeah. downloads. From like one, it wasn't. It was. It was like a small city in, and like not even a small city. It was like one small town in Germany. Like one firm. Yeah. But but my point is, there are people that are are very passionate about these unusual topics. But even if you're not super passionate about it, have a what I used to work with the Navy, and they call it a wave, uh, wave top level understanding, which is just like a high level understanding. It's just useful for everyone. Right, exactly. So, um, yeah. So make sure if you care about the privacy, anonymous payment, they shouldn't be asking you your name, address, all Separate that stuff. email. Usually account. it's just email, yeah. payment. Yep. Good to go. Um, also, when it comes to a um, DNS, make sure that, like, okay, computers are kind of, how do you say this? They're chatty. Yeah. There's a lot of information that they pass when they communicate on the internet that you're just not privy to. You just don't see it as a user. Um, the VPN provider, if it's configured properly, should just discard a lot of that data. Sometimes, though, they may not. And then the ISP of the VPN gets to see it. Right. 
Um, so if you make sure that you do a DNS leak, it's called DNS leak test, essentially is what they call it. There's a website. I'll put in the show notes to do that. It's www.dnsleaktest.com. Um, you can actually try it even if you don't have a VPN. Right. And it'll give you, like, there's a detailed test you can take, and it'll tell you all the data, all the information it could basically get out of your internet traffic. Right. So if you want to be really, really scared about <laughs> right, like, seriously. You know, all, the, all the things that are getting thrown out there on the internet every time you... I don't know, do whatever it is you do, that is actually a really good tool. Right. And um, the same is true with IPv6. Now, IPv4 um, is usually the IP address that most people are used to. Right. It's been around for a while. And it's just, that's all. It's a set, it's a set of numbers, really. Yeah, it's a standard. But yeah. with V6, there's a lot of information and data within that, um, the, with the V6 address. So, you can also I also recommend testing that as well. They should the, the 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 VPN should throw all that data out that's extraneous too, but you can find out if they are or not by going to test ipv6.com. And that'll and I'll put that link in the show notes too. It essentially does the same thing. It'll test and see what information it can gather just based off your IP address. Okay. Um so um once you've signed up Use those two tools. Most VPNs do a month-to-month basis with no contract, or they'll even do like a free trial. Do it, test it, see what you get back. Make sure that if you're in, if privacy is a concern, yeah, if you're happy with the results, you know, make sure move on with your day. Um, make sure that they use a pro- okay. There's a protocol. Um, when it comes to establishing a VPN, there's many protocols out there. The one that I think is the best to use is OpenVPN. Um, so like some are more like secure than others. Certain protocols, um, actually are out there documented as being completely compromised. And there are VPNs that actually use those compromised protocols. Mm. Um, basically that means that they've been found out. Like right. anyone can kind of just when you go to make your connection with the VPN, if they're using the wrong protocol, they can they, see who you are. The they has they keys to the many kingdom. yes, you know they have many faces. Um, <laughs> so you know, um, but then there's others that are free and, and open source. I'm a huge open source advocate um, because the way open source works is you have many people it's not like, it's like um crowdsourcing almost yeah. there's many people using it so yeah. if anyone's using it they find an issue they immediately fix it they or they can, well they they, can they raise it or they raise it yeah. to the level of awareness to where someone who can knows how to fix it fixes yeah. it it's the general principle of many hands make light work exactly um, and it's better than, I mean, I, I think it's much better than even like, um, your, your, your best software company that's completely private because they, they just don't have that many eyes on stuff yeah. that you would have in the, op- if it's open source, the whole world can see it. Look at Linux. Someone's exactly, right. someone's going to notice it and they're going to fix it. So really just look for open VPN because right. that's probably the best open source VPN protocol in the market. Um, avoid using really any other protocol, specifically PPTP. It's just not good for privacy. It's just a protocol that it's just not good for privacy. Open VPN is what you want to look for. Um, now, this probably doesn't apply to most unless you are a reporter or you're living in China or some right. other country that has restricted networks. Or, I mean, really, or if you're at work and you, you want to, like, play, I don't know, some online game yeah. or, or you want to, like, if not do any work. If you're in a high-risk high, <laughs> high risk area or, like, you're doing high-risk activity. Right, exactly. Then um, this is for you. Right. Uh, it's it's obfuscation. Obf, uh, yeah. yeah. So. Um, I can pronounce it. That's all I I can't. Um, basically, you want to look for things like multi-hop. Um, which is really just a way to kind of jump over kind of like your internal network to an outside. Um, you want to make sure they support um, 443, like port 443. You want to make sure they support OB 
FS proxy, SOX, SSL tunneling, SSH tunneling. Most people don't care about that unless you're actually trying to, you know, break out of a network you're in. And most Americans, most home users especially, yeah. aren't going to care about that at all. Well, in that case, like what you're describing there is really the scenario of someone is sitting inside of a network and they're trying to encapsulate themselves in their own little network. Or they're trying to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. and then tunnel out. Right, right. Whereas most of the people we're going to be talking about are sitting inside of, uh, you know, their house. Okay. Right, and so they, they have nothing but their they have own. Not, right, they can get out of their own network. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I just want to say, you know, I'm trying to cover all the use cases yeah. here. So. No, um, so before we get to, I mean, if you don't think we're in the tinfoil hat area, just wait. Yeah. Because there's a little bit more coming. Hold on. But, Dennis is getting ready to walk down right. to the lead bunker. Yeah. Yes. In my panic room. Um, As I've said before, <laughs> I always wear my tinfoil hat. Yeah. It's on at all times. I see it. Um, So but before I get there, I wanted to kind of just cover some things, other things you might want to look at um, for VPN. If you are interested in watching content all over the world or getting around like what they call geo blocks, which I said yeah. earlier, like if, if you want to watch, you know, baseball Major games baseball, in your hometown yeah. or whatever, you want to look at the number of countries and states that they offer VPNs in. Mm. Cause you Cause can connect. More is better. More is better. If that's what you're going yeah, for, if that's what you're going for. Obviously you want more regions because that gives you more options. Right. For getting content. Yeah, I mean, and like other countries, like if you're a big soccer fan, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, like if you can like get a VPN over to sure the UK. A pain with that stuff. Oh, yeah. So because here it's, it's licensed on, you know, whatever network. Yeah. But if you get a VPN over to the UK, you can go ahead and watch Arsenal or, you know, Manchester United or like yeah. whatever, etc. cetera. Right. Um, so, so you want to look at that. You also want to look at maybe the number of connections. Um, say you got a lot of devices. You just want to make sure that the devices that are going to be on the VPN, a lot of them won't have a cap. Some do. Some say you can only have like X amount of devices on at any given time. So that's something you might want to look out for. If you are using a jailbroken, which isn't really a thing, Amazon Fire TV stick or Kodi that has a lot of those questionable add-ons, you want to make sure, or you torrent a lot, you want to make sure that they don't block peer-to-peer -peer connections. Because right. some VPNs do, because they don't want to be held liable if yeah. someone's out there doing that. Um, speed. Yeah, and, and this has always been a concern of mine. And it, it's, a, it's a valid concern. Um, speed is going to be a thing here. When yeah. you're talking about the overhead of encryption and the overhead of using someone's DNS specifically it's going to deter how quick the connection is right so you when you're in your free trial or your first week you want to go out to whatever you use to test your speed google does it now actually if you just type if you go to google you type internet speed test they come up with a little speed test tool so you can go ahead and just check it i there. never use that yeah yeah like google will just come up with one now um so go ahead and test your internet connection speed before the VPN, test it after, see what the loss is. Um, that's a good way, you know, to see what, you know, how your speed will be affected. Make sure there's no bandwidth caps. There are a couple VPNs out there that actually say you can only throw this much data through the system at a time. I don't know why, because that's completely ridiculous, but some do. Um, I would completely stay away from them you just avoid them and just avoid them in general um and of course you know there's other things like if you they have a free trial or refund period that's always handy so you can test all this stuff out all right so you know if you don't mind paying because they're not expensive the one um the one i use is like you know it's like eight bucks a month it's not bad not at all um but so, i mean so it'd be nice if you want to do all this stuff just do it for free with a free trial Yeah, of course um all right so tinfoil hat time oh boy all right Level of surveillance. Now, when it comes to VPNs, there are a couple things here. You have the place where the company is incorporated in. Sure. You know, you have the place where the servers are. Yeah. All of those 
are going to be in some will be in countries where they're very you know open and free when it comes to the internet and others are going to be in countries where there's some pervasive right, yeah. you know searching and looking at what's happening on that network um luckily and i really didn't want to kind of get into the specifics of it because there was a time before 2014 where the USA was looked at as one of the friendliest countries in the world. Yeah. When it comes to internet. Yeah. Privacy. Then there was, I don't know, maybe a story that came out right yeah. about then. Mr. Snowden. Yeah, a little bit of an NSA. Released a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's like right down the street. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And we realized, hey, maybe the America isn't so friendly when it comes to, you know, internet privacy. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Um, and as a matter of fact, from 2014, we're one of the most, we're rated as one of the most pervasive in the world. Sure. We're there with, um, you know, Russia, China, India. Not good company. Um, but anyway, there's a Wikipedia page, and I'll link it in the show notes. It's called Inter Internet Censorship and Surveillance by Country. Right. And and I will say, in our defense, and will be the only thing I defend, is that censorship tends to be pretty light. No, no, we don't do that. It's more that we're, we're busting more of the surveillance we're part. We're very big in the surveillance yeah. part. We're actually, what's an, un, really unfortunate about this is that's, we're so hardcore on the surveillance part that we rank on the level with China. Right. Due Who's, to their level of censorship. Right. Um, which is pretty awful. Um, but, I mean, there's some countries like, you know, Canada, Brazil, Argentina, uh, most African countries, uh, which, is, which is surprising to me. Uh, Spain... Um, your Scandinavian countries are sure. all really solid when it comes to surveillance. They don't surveil at all. So if you can find a company that has its servers hosted there, yep, that's probably very handy. Yeah. So, and, and I'll put the link in the show notes. It's a whole, I mean, it's a long Wikipedia article on censorship surveillance, how they've judged this over the years because they've actually run this through multiple sources over time to kind of get a good view of this and it actually does a country by country breakdown it's very handy now um, i assume when you were talking about like incorporation that really comes down to like the the legal capture of data. right yeah well it kind of comes down to it because if your server is in a very you know friendly internet friendly state i mean country but it's incorporated in the usa and you have like the Justice yeah. Department leaving USA on that has company legal rights to go and right. Yeah, they're just gonna that data. they're just gonna hand that data over. Right. Um, so, so you ideally want a company a that's company incorporated that... and in a f internet fr like friendly friendly country. Um, so if that was you know all you had to worry about, that'd be easy. But unfortunately. <laughs> That doesn't sound easy, but go ahead. Well, you know, you just find one place. You're like, oh, my yeah. stuff's there. I'm solid. But not necessarily. Yeah. Because, I know where you're going. Yeah. There is, um, there's agreements out there. And now, now this sounds like some very, this is some cloak and dagger stuff. It sounds like I'm going to be it's, talking about here. It's not that cloak and but dagger. But it, it's the name. It sounds, okay. <laughs> it's something out there called the 14 Eyes. Maybe it's because we're inside the Beltway. That's, yeah, that we know about that. But basically, I don't all, really think a lot of people know. Unless you're like into big, if you're big into like internet privacy, you, you probably know about this. The, the easy one to talk about is the Five Eyes. Well, the Five Eyes is is where this started. Yeah, and really, it's it's a it's a agreement to share. It's a reciprocity agreement. Information. Yeah, um, it involves the United States. Uh, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada, and Australia. Yeah. And basically... That's eh, five eyes. Right. That's the five eyes. Um, and and, and it, an exa a great example here is Canada is one of the most friendliest places in the world for internet. They don't surveil at yep. all. But... We do. We and do. And we're also part of the five eyes. 
So if you're in Canada and you're using a U.S. server, we have Canada privileged right to, to get know, to their data. They talk to us. We'll give them the data. Yeah. Oh, is so. And this goes. I mean, it's not all classified information, obviously, but but generally speaking, there is quite a lot of information shared between. Uh, the countries within the five eyes and then the 14 basically just extends out in you know right ever expanding spheres. well because there the, there's these other agreements that are out there that connect yeah. countries and the nine eyes include denmark it's basically the five eyes plus yeah. denmark france the netherlands and norway yeah it's it's the main nato players right um and then you go to the 14 eyes and you add in Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. Yep. So, you know, five eyes, I would kind of try to stay away. If you care about, you know, if you're really wearing the tinfoil hat here. Yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> compartmentalize, right? Like there's the, I just kind of want to secure my stuff. Right. A I just want to, than... I just want to drink my coffee at Starbucks and get on the internet. Then you Honestly, you could have tuned out after encryption. Well, and and again, let's go back to the the casual thief walking down the street pulling uh, car door handles, right? If you just want to be the guy who's not the guy with their car unlocked, go with what Dennis was talking about in the beginning. Right. But if you want to be the guy who's got, like, the beefy car alarm and his car's locked, and, you know, there's a boot on it and, you know, right. you really want to lock that puppy down. Then you really want to pay him uh, in attention to not only where the servers are, where the country or where the company is incorporated, but also the reciprocity agreements with the countries that that country is incorporated in and where their servers are. Right. Because, I mean, you got to think it's like we live in the era of big data. It's not like, you know, Columbo is walking around, you know, trying to piece this information together to figure out who I someone hope is. He is but... Well, I mean, that'd be nice if Peter Falk was walking yeah. around trying to piece this up. I love Peter Falk. Yeah, he just at the end he spins around. Like, ah, one more thing. You know, one like more, one more thing. Right. What kind of VPN do you Right, have? he busts you. But no, what happens is is they basically if they really want to find out who someone is, they throw all this data into a computer. It uses an algorithm that's been trained. It makes these connections. It even gets down to like your, it, it gets into social link analysis sure. to where it's looking at, you know, you're on this forum, your Facebook accounts here, here is your pool of known people. And, and it, it really can really dissect a, a, who you are. And that's why I'm saying, that's why I got back down to the, if you really care about it, make sure your email account is completely detached from sure. you. You're just making it harder. Right. Cause they're right. going to figure out, I mean, if you, if you, if you're on a VPN, if you, if you have signed up for an e, uh, VPN with an email account and you use an email account anywhere else, it's connected to that data too. Yeah. And they'll be able to use that data to figure out who you are. Right. And, and really, if you don't care, that's fine, but this is more for the people who. But if you do, really concerned. And I, if if you do, I would definitely go out and get yourself a secure email. Yeah. So, I think I think that we've hit the bottom of the rabbit hole. Yeah, my throat is dry. Yeah. After all of that. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff. Yeah, I unloaded. So <laughs> that song cannot play soon enough. There it is. All right. All right. I'm Dennis Rostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And we'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everyone. That was a good take care, Joel. Thank you. All right. You going to keep that one? I think I might. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe, especially if you're in iTunes, because we go up in the iTunes rankings, more visibility, more people listen, the longer we do this thing. Um, also, word of mouth is always a good thing. So if you have any friends you think are going to be interested in, you know, some of the topics we cover here on the show, please let them know. If you have a question or comment, you can follow us on Twitter, handles at Grounded Reason. Uh, you can send us an email. That email address is podcast at groundedreason.com. Um, you can also go over to our Facebook page. Just search for Grounded Reason. Or uh, you can just 
head over to groundedreason.com and leave a comment on the blog. Another way you can uh, show your support is to leave a review on iTunes. People read those things. You leave a good one, they might come check us out. Again, more listeners, longer we do this thing. Be sure you're uh, supporting net neutrality. You know, you can uh, go out and uh, leave a comment on the FCC website to express your support, and it goes down on the permanent record. Uh, We did a show on it a while back. It's actually called How to Save Net Neutrality. So it should be easy to find, but it's episode 33 if you're having trouble. Remember to tip your waiters. This is Dennis, and I'll see you next week. Later, everybody.